right, Algebra 1, Lesson 113. This one is on direct variation and then inverse variation. Now, we're going to move to Example 113.1 from the get-go. Um, but I want to share something with you, okay? So, on these, um, I want you to listen to um, the problem, and it's going to be broken up in two ways. So, listen to it. Here's what it says. The mass of a substance varies directly. Now, that's going to be important. Varies directly. Okay? So, the mass of a, of a substance varies directly as the volume as the volume the mass of the substance varies directly as the volume of the substance. Okay? Then, that's one part. So listen to this. Then it says this. If the mass of two liters of the substance, the mass of the two liters of the substance is 10 kilograms, then it asks this. What will be the volume? What will be the volume of 35 kilograms of the substance? Okay. Now, what I wanted you to see is that the mass varies directly. And remember how I told you that that's important? Varies directly means that they're going to go in the same direction, whether it's up or down. It's going to vary. Um, but it's going to go directly in the same direction, okay? We're going to learn something inverse in a minute. We'll talk about that, okay? Um, so, uh, the mass varies directly as the volume. The mass of 2 liters is 10 kilograms. Now, the first thing you want to learn to do is when you're doing varies directly, you're always going to multiply something. So, when you're working with varies directly, those key word in your problem, you are going to multiply. So, we're going to use M for mass. M equals, okay, and the mass varies directly. And when you see this varies directly, you're going to use the letter K. That's just what they used. I don't know why. Um, they can't use V because V is for volume. So, um, they use K, okay? And then mass varies directly as the volume. V. Okay? So the first one equals the K V. K is for varies and volume is V. Okay? And now, remember how I told you it was divided into two parts? Listen to what it said. Mass of two liters of the substance is 10 kilograms. It told us exactly. And then it has a question. We're going to do this part first using this um, equation. So, the mass of 2 liters is 10 kilograms. So, the mass is 10 kilograms. So, I'm going to put 10 equals. All right? Now, we don't know what the K is because it varies. And then, um, the mass of 2 liters, 2 liters is the amount of volume. It has um, it's kind of like having an aquarium. Aquarium is a good picture of volume. It would be like if I poured a two liter bottle of Coke into the aquarium. That would be volume. Okay? So, two is my volume. Okay? So, basically what I'm trying to do is figure out what is the vary. How, what, what number is varying. Okay? So, um, this says two times K. And so, um, remember how we always do this? This times 2 goes across, and we divide, and so K equals 5. Okay? So, so far, we're good. All right? We basically came up with what is the variable, what is, uh, what is varying. Okay? Now, we're going to answer this question, and you're going to use this same um, equation. So, we're going to put M equals KV. Now, we're going to insert... What our K is, we know it's 5. And then what will be the volume? They're asking what is the volume of, and then they give us the mass, how much it weighs, 35 kilograms. Mass is how much it weighs, and it's 35 kilograms. Okay? So now they're asking, 
asking five times what equals 35? And seven is the answer. And because it's volume, we're working with L liters to fill up our aquarium, to fill up our volume, length, width, and height. Okay? So in this lesson, volume is always L, um, or what's well, a V, but it's how many liters. So seven liters would be our answer. V equals seven liters. Okay? So that would be the final answer on that kind of problem. Okay? Let's do a few more just to make sure you're getting it completely. Okay? Now there are always going to be different M equals um, KV and all those things. Um, but we're going to come up with letters that make sense other than the variable and they always use K. Alright, so listen to this one. This one. The distance traversed by a car Traveling at a constant speed is directly proportional to the time spent traveling. Okay? So the distance, D, remember how you always write whatever is first. The distance traveled by the car at a constant speed is directly proportional. Remember when you hear that directly proportional? It's directly. Then you know that that's where your K goes. Proportional to the time and T is time. Okay? So the distance is directly proportional. And when we hear those words, directly or um, indirect, we'll learn that later. But directly proportional varies directly. That's where you're going to put your K to the time. T is time spent traveling. Okay. So we're trying to figure out what our K is. So listen to, there's two-part problem. If the car goes... 75 kilometers in five hours. That's the first portion. Then, how far will it go? Will it go in seven hours? Okay, so we take this first portion. They tell us exactly what we need to know, and then we're going to come to the point that we don't know. So let's put everything up here. Distance, D, how far they traveled, 75 kilometers. Time, 5 hours. This says K times 5. So this times 5, I'm going to move across here. It's going to become divided by 5. And then K equals 15. Now that was just our first. That's how much it's varying. Okay? So this K is 15. So we use that same excuse me, that same um, equation, D equals KT. And now we use what information we know about the K, 15, and then how far will it go in seven hours? Seven hours is times. So this times this equals our distance. And so then 15 times seven is 105. So the distance equals 105. And because we're asking how far, and this one was in kilometers, this one's going to be in kilometers. Okay? Hopefully that's making sense. Um, I think let's do one more just to make sure you get practice on these directly ones. Um, and then we're going to do um, inverse. Okay? Now, here we go. Try to do this on your own if you can. Pause me and see if you get it right. Under certain conditions, the pressure of the gas varies directly. There's that varies directly. So we're working with pressure of the gas varies directly, remember everything is times K, um, varies directly as the temperature. T is for temperature in this one. Pressure varies temperature. All right? And then again, they give us a two-part problem. Here we go. When the pressure is, pressure is 800 pascals, so I guess the P could be pascals or pressure, um, uh, Pascals. The temperature is temperature is 400 K Kelvin. Okay, we don't use Kelvin here in America. Uh, most of the time we use Fahrenheit. Okay, so temperature is 400 Kelvin, and the pressure is 800. Um, I never heard of that word before. Pascals. Pascals. Okay, here we go. So the P is for the pressure or the Pascals. 800 equals, um, we don't know what K is, that's what we're trying to figure out, but the temperature is 400. 400. 
Okay, so this is asking 400 times what equals 800. Hopefully you realize that K is 2. Okay, so now, um, oh, let me read the rest of the problem. That was the very first part. Remember how it's a two-part problem? Or it tells us, this tells us everything we need to know, and the next problem, portion of it tells us the question. What is the temperature when the pressure is? So what is the temp when the pressure, pressure is 400 pascals. Okay, we use the same thing, P equals KT, K is two, and they're asking what is the temperature if the pass pressure is 400. So now it's asking two times what equals 400. Hopefully you realize is that T equals 200, okay? So the temperature is 200 Kelvin. I need to write K on that. For that's what K they're doing um, temperature in is Kelvin. All right. So now you've learned about varies directly. Okay. You remember how I told you everything's multiplied when you're doing that. Well, when you're doing an inverse variation. Okay. And here's some of the words you're going to hear. Listen to this varies inversely, inversely proportional, uh, varies inversely. Okay, so those are some of the things. Whenever you hear inverse, inverse means opposite. So if you multiply on the last one, guess what you're going to do? You're going to divide. Okay? And just like we did mass equal K times T or whatever, this time it's going to be mass equals, and instead of multiplying, you're going to say K divided by T because you're dividing because it's inverse. Okay? So, now, let's do some of these that we've got. All right, here we go. Under certain conditions, the pressure of a perfect gas varies inversely as the volume. Pressure, that's the first one mentioned, varies inversely. Remember, they're always using K as the volume. There's our V. Pressure varies volume. All right? Now, here's what they tell me. When the pressure of the quantity of gas is 7 pascals, the volume is 75 liters. Okay? That's our first information. Our second one is going to have us, so it tells us everything we need to know. And then this one's going to be a question. So, what would be the volume, what's the volume, if the pressure is increased to 15 pascals? Okay, let's perform this one first, because remember that gives us our K, how much it's varying. Okay, so here we go. Um, 7 pascals for the pressure, and the volume is 75 liters. Okay. <laughs> Now, this is kind of hard to see, um, but basically you're saying, um, if you were to write this in a, um, for example, uh, 20 divided by 5 equals 4, okay? This 20 is going to be the biggest number, divided by 5 equals 4. So, this times this equals that. So, guess what? This times this is going to equal what our K is. So, 75 times 7, 35, 49, 50, 51, 52, 525. K equals, whoops, 525. Now, that just tells us what our K is, what our variation is. Now, we actually do the problem, okay? So, we use the same P equals K over V for volume. And then we don't know the volume, so I'm leaving that as V. And P is pascals, or pressure, and it's 15. And then we know that the K is 525. Okay. It always helps me when I don't know what to do, come up with numbers that I do know what to do, and then figure it out. So basically this is saying 4 times 5 is 20. 15 times V is 525. You see that? 4 times 5 is 20. 15 times V is 525. So I'm basically saying 15 times what is 525? 
So since this is times 15, I'm going to divide by 15. And so then my V will equal, and I'm just going to look and see, looks like it's 35. 35, and since it's volume, we're working with liters. Okay? So that's our answer. All right? Let's do one more and we're done. Okay? You can even pause me and see if you can do this one. Uh, we're going to be doing 113.5. All right? To travel a fixed difference, distance, the rate is inversely proportional. Okay. Now, um, you need to pay attention to the words uh, rate is inversely, remember, inversely proportional, and then to the time required. Rate, inversely, time. All right? Now, after we kind of get our um, equation set up, here's what it says. When the rate is 60, rate is 60 kilometers per hour, and the time is 4 hours. Okay. Now, we want to try to figure out what our K is. Okay. So this is the first part. What's the second part? It's going to ask us the questions because it gives us everything we need to know and then a question. What would be the time required for the same distance if the rate increased, rate increased to 80 kilometers per hour? Okay? So, we'll answer this one second, but we're going to do this one first. So, the rate is 60 kilometers. K is what we're trying to find. Time is 4. Okay? It always helps me to have this. So, if... Um, 4 times 5 is 20, because 20 divided by 4, or divided by 5 is 4. So 5 times 4 is 20, so 60 times 4 is 240. So K equals 240. Okay, because 240 divided by 4 is 60. Okay, so let's put our equation back up here. Um, it was R equals K over T. Okay? Let me put K equals 240 right here. All right, so now K equals 240. And let's put it down on here. So we're looking for the times. So we're going to leave T there. The rate increased to 80. Okay. So now, again, 5 times 4 is 20. 80 times T equals 240. So I'm saying 80 times what equals 240? And hopefully you know that T equals 3. And because we're doing time, we are working with hours, 4 hours. So this one's 3 hours. Okay. And you can also do this times 80 and do divide by 80 to get the T. All right. And that is lesson 113.